An important component of all of our math classrooms is the emphasis on vocabulary. In our three to five classrooms, we use Kim charts to support students in obtaining a working knowledge of essential math vocabulary. As you can see, when the students first get their new words, they copy them into their journal using three columns. The K is for the keyword because it is important to their mathematical understanding. I is for in our own words. After copying the keywords, the students move over to the word wall. This is where students spend time discussing the word in order to build meaning. After collaborating with each other, they begin to define the key term in their own words. M is for memory picture or model. Students create a visual example to help them recall an image in their heads and to extend their thinking. After they have had a few days to work with the vocabulary in groups, students get together with Mrs. Friday and create an oversized Kim chart to display in the room. The students will talk to their elbow partner to see how they have interpreted the word and then work together as a group to think of the best verbiage to put on the chart. Once students have compiled all of the key words with definitions and models, they will have a better understanding of what new vocabulary terms mean and how to use them. Both the anchor chart and their journals are an important resource in their work. It is highly likely that if we were to walk into a math classroom, we would see students engaged in math-centered discussions. To do so, students are encouraged to use accountable talk. This supports SMP3, which is to construct viable arguments and critique others' thinking. Simply put, students have to be able to explain their thinking and justify the strategies they have used to solve a problem. They are taught not only to clearly and efficiently share their own thinking, but to ask questions of others and analyze the solutions that others have come up with. This provides an amazing opportunity for students to grow as thinkers, reflect on their own use of strategies, and ultimately learn from others. I need for everybody to remember on the outside, no, you do the outside, and I need for everybody else to be the area, you're going to be the inside part of our circle. Hey guys, remember we're going to stand shoulder to shoulder so that you are able to see your partner's work as they justify their thinking and explain how they were able to solve the problems, okay? And a dozen is 12, and, and each of them should have one cookie, so Miss Roberts should make 12 cookies because she has 12 students. But for part B, she has 24 students, and each dozen costs 378. So I wanted to get the cents done. So I had 78 plus 78, which is one dollar and fifty-six cents. And then I added the dollars, which is three dollars. So one one dollar and fifty-six cents plus three dollars equals four dollars and fifty-six cents. And then add another three dollars equals twelve dollars. Oh no, it doesn't. Okay, I didn't realize that it said it's each dozen cookies. I thought it says each cookies. So I get the cookies plus three. It equals seven dollars and fifty-six. Yeah. For class for 24 students, show all your mathematical thinking. Let's see what you did first. Okay, so I said, so we know that each dozen is 378, so I did six dozens. So because six, because 12 divided by 72, no, because 36 plus 36, 36 is, is three dozens, and she wants her class to have the cookies. I, I just did a box model, I tried the other way to do the work, so I tried a box model, and so she changed it to 24. 
So I did. I just turned three three dollars and seventy cents to three hundred seventy-eight. That would be easier to do the box promo. And I got eighty dollars and seventy-two cents. It probably doesn't look accurate. It kind of does though. It's like four. I disagree. Cause um, because I got seven dollars. Because um, if each dozen costs three hundred and seventy-eight to make, she has twenty-four students. So one dozen equals twelve students. Two dozen equals twenty-four students. So and I have three um. Three dollars and seventy-eight cents oh, plus three dollars and seventy-eight cents. You got seven dollars and fifty-six cents. So Miss Roberts will have to pay seven hundred up to get seven dollars and fifty-six cents to make two dozen. And then just because twenty um, four students is two dozen, so I had um, three dollars and seventy-eight. Closely, read carefully, make sure that we understand. We have to SMP number one, right? Yes. Before we can persevere, we have to make sure we understand what it is in front of us. Over there. SMP number one. What are some other things we should do when we get our word problem? We've got our problem solving hat on. Join us quickly. What's one of the first things we're going to do? Okay, going back to that cube strategy. Common Core demands the application of math skills to real-life situations. That's why having opportunities to grapple with word problems is so important. SMP1 refers to students' need to understand a problem and persevere in solving it. When students are engaged in problem-solving tasks, they begin by breaking the story down into manageable, understandable parts using the CUBE's strategy. They make careful choices about the tools and strategies they employ. They share ideas and discuss the most efficient strategies to use. Through accountable talk, they ask questions of each other and discuss the reasonableness of their answers. So, um, let's write a underline three dozen and write an arrow to it and write 36. Yeah, because um, 12 times 3, three is 36. 36. Yeah. And dozen means 12. The muffins are to be arranged in the shape of a rectangle. Let's underline rectangle. Wait, so then you can make like an array or something. What you're trying to say, I don't understand how that is important. Well, it's important to make sure you know what the question is asking you, uh, so you can answer everything. Oh, so, so it goes to the underlying part. So In our third grade class, we tried to do short number talks each day for ongoing practice with computation that will develop the student's fluency, or ease in adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. It only takes five minutes for this useful practice. It also gives the teacher a chance to see how the students interact with each other as they ponder the mathematical task presented. The teacher can see the level of understanding of each student by listening to their responses. In this third grade class number talk, we are sharpening our mental math skills by learning and practicing strategies. 
Here, our targeted strategy is making a quick 10 by decomposing at least one of the numbers. Um, who can remind me what our strategy we've been working on? Yes. Decomposing. Okay. And decomposing in order to do what? To figure out problems and solve. Okay. To figure out problems and solve mentally. And what else about that decomposing? We're going to make a, make a quick, quick, make a quick, quick ten. ten. Right. So that is our strategy. Ten. We're going to look at these numbers and think, how can I make a quick ten? Okay. All right, so get your hands ready, with your chest, and let's do our first number. Okay, remember, you're going to put your thumb up when you've got the answer, and then while we're waiting for everybody to come up with the answer in their mental math, um, you can think of other strategies, and you can put up another finger, and just keep thinking of strategies until everybody's ready, and then we'll share, okay? Equals, okay? Everybody figure out mentally what is the answer to nine plus eight, Put your thumb up when you have an answer and a strategy, and then keep thinking of more strategies if you have time. Okay, all right, I see everybody's thumbs up. So first, I raise your hand if you know the answer to nine plus eight. Okay, Madison? 17. Okay, Madison says 17. Raise your hand if you came up with a different answer to oh. nine plus eight. Okay, so everybody agrees at 17. All right, let's check and see if that's correct. Now I'd like to hear, um, who can tell me that make a quick 10 strategy? Let's do that one first, okay? Um, Brianna, um, show me what you did. So I took um, one away from the eight. Okay. Which turned into a seven. Okay, that's gonna be a seven. And so I added it to the nine, which turned into a 10. Okay. And then I added 10 plus, plus 7 equals 17. Very good. And that was easy to do in your head. Anytime you're adding a number to 10, it's very quick and easy. 28 plus 4. If you can write down 28 plus 4. Yes. So um, I did, I take away four, 2 from the 4 and I take, uh, and I put it to the 28. And the 28 become 30, and a 4 become a 2, and then I got 32. Mm -hmm. Using the mathematical strategy of constructed response, these fifth grade students discuss a word problem with a partner. They can remember the strategy by using this mnemonic device. Roger just viewed crazy elephants. The R is for restate. They need to restate the question and prove the solution in a complete sentence. J is for justify. They'll say things like, I know this because, the solution is this because, or my reasoning is. V stands for vocabulary. They must include appropriate vocabulary. C stands for connect. They must be able to connect the solution and relate it to other math concepts. And finally, E is for evidence. They need to include the numbers and explanation of models. I know 6 plus 4 is 10, and then 3 plus 8 is 11, so that would be 21. But 21 plus 6 is not 24. No, 6 plus 4 is 10. Oh, but then, but then how would we get 24? Or is that right? Just add them up. Maybe, maybe there's not 24 people. Maybe there's not. So there's six and seven eighths people. But that's not right. Yeah, six and seven eighths. No, no, because this, because that's so so okay. 
So 4 plus 8 is 12, right? No, you can do 6 plus 4 is oh, yeah. 10, then 10 plus 8 is 18, and 3 plus 18 is 21. And, but you have to add the 6 people. Yeah, you can just add it, so 6 and 7, 8. Six, no, you have to add it to that. No, because that's... Wait, I'm so Just add weight. It's a fraction of the pizza, right? I know it's a fraction of the people. You can't cut people in half. Yeah, I know what this is. Yeah, okay, we need to read this over. How many, how many people are this? This is hard. We added. So, first we um we set aside. We found all the fractions, which is all the info from this text. Then we set aside hamburger meat because that's a whole different story with people other than the amount of the total cost. So we set that aside. Then we added all of our all of our um, fractions that we got from the text, and that all came in to 21 24 Then we simplified that. You got seven and yeah. And then we realized there's one eighth left, and since we set aside six. Six students for hamburger meat. We had we recognized that we recognized that six was equal to one eighth. And since we know seven eighths is equal to seven one eighths, we multiply. We still have six, so we multiply six times seven, get forty two. Then we add forty two and add, and then we add forty two to six, and we get forty eight, and that's our answer. And then you add them all up, 21, 24, is 7 eighths of all the people. But then we know what another eighth of all people is because it's 6. And then in 6 1, we did take diagrams. And so it's like breaking up the whole. So if you know what one of them is, then you know what all the other ones are because they're all equal pieces because that's what fractions are. So that this one would be 6, this one would be 6, and then so on. So all we have to do is multiply 6 by the 8 pieces. And that would be 48 people wanted what topping on their pizza.